Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. This video is going to be a bit of a departure from my usual home lab stuff, but I am going to be using it for a home lab application. Today I'm going to be talking about 3D printing. This has been something that's kind of been considered for a long time and I eventually decided to reach out to the good guys at Bamboo Labs who kindly sent me one of their A1 printers. Now this video is not sponsored by them so I can say what I want. Thankfully, everything I do have to say is really positive. I've been absolutely blown away by this thing, and that's coming from somebody who's a bit of a nerd who does miniatures, so I know about detail at small scale. So before we get started, it's probably worth setting some context. Why do you need a printer for a home lab? Well, there's lots of things that I want to do with this thing, and that's kind of what I touted to Bamboo Labs. Now, as you know, I've got the MSO1s in a cluster, and I've had a few thoughts about what I want to do with those. Now, traditionally, I've always built wooden products, but when you get down to small scale, my skills just aren't that good. And some of those tolerances, wood can bend and walk quite easily, and I need something that I could reproduce quite quickly. My goal in that space will ultimately be able to provide a better cooling solution for those devices, and I'll be covering that in future videos as I go more down the 3D printing route. So let's start by having a look at what this printer is, and more about printers in general. So the printer that Bamboo Labs sent me is an FDM, a filament printer. Now commonly in the home user space, there's typically two types, albeit there are more, so things like lasers, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. And those are the filament ones that I received, but also the resin. Now, a TLDR on what the difference is. Filament have traditionally been, and still are, less precise when it comes to fine granular details. That's because they're basically melting a piece of plastic out of a small nozzle, and they're doing that in layers. Resin uses a liquid albeit a highly toxic liquid that is a bit of a nightmare for disposal and also creates lots of toxic fumes so you don't want this in the same room you are if you've got small children etc you're going to need to have a professional setup with ventilation but being a liquid and due to the way it works with lasers etc it does create much finer detail now i'd already ruled that out because of the toxicity issues and also the fact that FDM models tend to be stronger. So for things that are more mechanical, i.e. things like for my computer cases and where I need probably a bit more heat resistance, FDM filament was the way. Now, the model they sent me is actually sort of their second tier. They have the A1 Mini that sits below this, which is basically a reduced or a light version of the A1. From everything I've seen, some of the core technology around the nozzle sizes and what it can actually do is basically the same. These are bed slingers, so basically the bed moves around and the nozzle then extrudes the filament onto the plate. They're higher tier models, so you've got things like the P1S and the X1C, I believe. Um, those have different technology and they also have filament holders built into them. The benefit of that is also that you get to use different types of plastics. The plastic I'm using here is PLA and when you go higher up the stack you get PETG and ABS. Again, some of those plastics do create some hazardous fumes, albeit not as bad as resin. I do recommend whatever 3D printer you're going to go for, you really do understand the environmental conditions that you're going to have to have in place and the safety measures that you'll need as well to make sure that you don't put yourself and your family in harm's way. Thankfully for me, that wasn't a problem. I'd always said from the start that I wanted the least toxic, less fuss that I could get. And so the PLL route was actually the best and it was also the cheapest. And so far I've been absolutely blown away by the results of what this thing can do. Now, Bamboo Labs gave me some vouchers that I could spend on this device. So I bought some filament and I toyed with some additional nozzles. Now by default, this comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is great if you want sort of good quality at a reasonable speed. I opted to get an additional 0.2 millimeter because I'd been reading up and that gives you much finer granularity. But it does come at the cost of speed. Basically, the smaller the nozzle and critically the smaller the layer height, i.e. this thing's built up in layers. And you can see some examples of how that's done on screen. The more layers, obviously the more passes from the head, therefore it's gonna take longer, but you get more detail. 
Now I'll be totally honest, I'm completely new to 3D printing. So I'm not an expert, I haven't had multiple years of experience in understanding what's the best and I haven't analyzed trends over the years. But what I can say is if you're in the market for a 3D printer, definitely, definitely check this out. As you can see from some of the things on the screen, I've been trying to challenge this printer first by printing out some scenery for my miniatures. These are pretty high resolution, there are millions of triangles in these images, and you can easily modify and send these to your printer using the Bamboo Labs application. It also has a handy mobile application as well, which means that you can monitor your prints and your files on the fly. There's also things like a marketplace attached to that so you can download models, etc. The ability to be able to start and stop and also check in because it's got a built-in camera, which I find is really useful. I have had a couple of issues whereby one of the builds has failed. So this is usually due to a bad model or maybe the bed's moved and that model's fallen over, which means you start to get the spaghetti where it just pours out of the nozzle and then starts to string up. Having the camera available means I can pause it and you can also, what's really cool, is delete certain models on the plate. So if you know that you've got one part of the model that's failed, you can just stop that part. So the print can continue and then you can just reprint that single piece at a later time. Now, I would say that the setup process for this is involved, but not complicated. What do I mean by that? Well, there is a lot of construction when you get this. But it's basically removing screws that are in there for packaging and I must say the packaging was excellent. I'd be very surprised if you get this in a damaged state. Once you remove some of those backing plates you simply need to assemble it following the instructions. You need to sort of tip it up, put some screws back in, put some different plates in, make sure you remove all of the packaging around the header, the nozzle, the extruder etc. And then you're on to powering the device. Now with the device I got, I actually had the AMS, which is their automatic sort of spool management system. And again, this thing is bulletproof. You simply plug it in to the printer, you put your spool into it, and it just takes care of everything else. It actually has a motorized feeder that pulls the spool into the machine and then gets cracking. Now, thankfully, I didn't have to spend any time doing the calibration manually. They have a great automatic calibration tool that you just basically first time you boot it up it says hey I need to calibrate and you go and do that. Now once that's done you're pretty much ready to go. Now you can connect like I've shown before using the inbuilt application the Bamboo Lab Studio and you can do that either through their cloud service which is going to make the setup really straightforward i.e. you just connect to it on the same network and it will go ahead and do it. Now those prints do go through Bamboo Labs so it does actually say don't put anything secret in there but there is also a LAN only mode as well which negates the use of the cloud so you can direct connect from your own PC directly to your printer and cut out that cloud link. Now things like the camera when you're away you'll have to set up port forwards and all of that sort of stuff but that should be possible. So now I've had this for sort of a week and a half and I've been printing pretty much non-stop. One of the things I was really concerned about is obviously the durability, but from everything I've seen on the forums and my own experience, this thing is built to last. And what's really great to see is the fact that you can basically replace all of the parts. If you go onto their website and look at the accessories, they've got replacement parts for everything on the model, which is something that more manufacturers need to do. I'm not saying that others don't in the printing space, I haven't looked into that but it's refreshing to see that. So many times I see devices now, things like phones where you can't even replace the battery. So what am I gonna be doing it? Well, I touched on it a bit earlier. There's a load of things that I want to build. So things around hard drive caddies that I can now do. I can start to build better table management systems for my machines. I wanna be able to reorientate my MSO1. I wanna be able to rebuild a case so that I can actually put a proper knock to a fan on the side of it. And also some additional sort of cable management clip kind of things that I want to use to be able to tidy up my server rack. So I'm going to be covering those in future videos and I'd love to be able to put those out to the community because I know things like the MSO1 are a popular device and it would be great if we could get some collaboration on that. So I'm going to draw a line on the video there now. If you have any questions about this device, I'm happy to try and answer them. Drop a comment below. As I said, I've had this now for almost two weeks. Um, so I'm no, by no means an expert, but I have been using this pretty solidly. I think if you're in the marketplace for a printer on a budget, this is definitely the place to check out. 
Let me know if you're a bit of a 3D printing wizard and what your thoughts are. Really keen to see what other people have got doing with this device specifically, if there's anything I should know about it. But anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.